special chat me and samuel are like uh, bitching about my youth <laughs> barbara joining us from the left <laughs> all you have to say this in the live stream thanks shit <laughs> <laughs> so But, that people can join that's why i said it in the live stream uh yeah it's fun i think we are live i just want to check because lisa can you double check okay i think we are live because the yeah, zoom was that. stuck for a, for a bit cool 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 welcome everyone to network state study group session 2 thanks a lot everyone for joining and to all the viewers who are watching right now or in future we have some interesting topic to discuss today and i had some uh, realization uh, after reading this article and it's quite insightful so hopefully we'll have a good brainstorming discussion uh, for this topic so it's written by jonathan hills from cabindal is an amazing a uh, content creator and if uh, i would recommend to follow him uh, on twitter if you are very much interested in this space so it, it uh, goes through the whole history of decentralized cities and centralized states and based on the cycles are like there are like some trends which are repeating over ages so how we can get insights from these trends so we can be better prepared for uh, the next cycle and the current uh, years development so first is technologies redefine power structure and lay the bedrock of new civilization era so the graph pretty much shows how like with time what were the new technologies that were developed what were centralization federation and decentralization in those eras set of new coordination technologies come along and change everything by allowing small groups of humans to better cooperate in the collective management of resources this change and redefine the power structures so that is very important point and these are like four uh, key points that we use technology for coordination and communication this coordination of allows effective local decentralized governance structures local decentralized governance structure and ultimately you have this local and then there is a federated network of decentralized governance which is overpowered by efficient centralized structure of sovereignty and this centralized sovereign uh, sovereign structure eventually collapsed under its own weight this four lines it didn't hit me when i first read it but like this is the whole cycle uh, if you think um, so there is a new technology which improves coordination and co- communication let's say in this pandemic zoom or like think about last deck this new coordination uh, or discord which should be a better example this coordination technologies allow for local decentralized governance think about this in like online communities formation creator economy formation like ultimately the uh, we need like a federated governance so i think that's where like a dao uh, or like network of daos come into place so i was reading one article from oh my god it was like how a dao then formed like a sub daos for various services for better coordination and the centralized eventually collapse so how this is the cycle we'll uh, discuss in the article so this is ancient classical medical modern and these are the various uh, things that emerged in the emperors so ancient era first citizen 
So when it is irrigation provided a path for large scale cooperation. So earlier when uh, there were river valleys and they died in flood, and then there was a requirement for cooperative structures to that birth the cities. So when the construction demanded a degree of social intercourse, cooperation and long range planning that the old self contained village culture, complacently accepting its limitation didn't need or courage. But the very conditions that made large urban settlements of a physical possibility also made them a social necessity. This is a very good point in the article. Like, although it was not required for those local small villages and communities, once they, they did, it became a necessity. And like that's where the whole city uh, culture was developed from local regions. Yeah, it would prove more valuable to the arc of civilization, cooperative development of public goods. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware about the tragedy of the common. So it's basically it's a situation in which individual users who have ex who have open access to resource unhampered by say, shared social structures or formal rules that govern access and use act independently according to their own self-interest and contrary to common good of all users. So that, that leads to some of the corruption, exploitation, uh, which we foresee, so it's that part. What else? Yeah, this is also, localized irrigation projects are were too big for any one person to manage. So that's why a small group of people working together uh, made it possible. This collectively managed as a shared resource by system of rules became the bottom up governance systems of cooperative working. That's like original DAO in ancient era. So not top down, bottom up approach, which this guy is followed and you can see in this image pretty much uh, gives a good idea about how this works. So now we saw there's a bottom up uh, working approach in we went from localized communities near river valley to the large network of social uh, like city based emergence. Yeah. Cities became the ultimate manifestation of enormous mobilization of vitality, power, and wealth that escapes rural limitations and allows for no mere change of size and skill, but a change of direction and purpose manifested in a new type of organization, which led to higher density. It also led to new technologies in business writing, money, laws, and culture. Then this is another interesting, so fractal federation. So as you can see, like uh, 10,000 years ago, there is a land between rivers and this was also like at the time, it was like irrigation based uh, development. And so the, uh, the tributaries of river joining together into the basins became uh, the hierarchy and like uh, uh, determine the concentrated power of this new cities which were emerging. So I have a point here, like when it was a village system where it was the original Tao, people moved to city for the intention of coming together and for a good well-being right but not everybody can control so some political powers these kind of uh, society was made like div divisions were done so that everyone prosper in their own own area which they are like so similarly gonna be a network cities so at the end the power gonna govern the network cities is this how we can see mm, i'm 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 uh... You said several things. I'm just uh, understanding 
so are you saying like the network where there's higher resources determines the power of that network so the power is like you can manage anybody possibly like basically lawmakers are the powerful people who can uh, you know make or break the laws so like for example if we go to any network city and there will be some okay there will be not one person governing it will be a smart contracts and other thing yeah yeah i think then it makes sense okay the power will not be given to anyone it will be to the system yeah but people It's will be systematic oh. change yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay right so uh at some point like with power there's corruption and like a cunning charismatic leader say does it scale so these like small communities getting together forming cities and work, working together then again centralization so all this are like keep this four things in mind like technology so there's a new communication which like the original dao phenomena based on the the technology at that time was like emergence of agriculture then from those uh, cities they went on like a centralized scale and then now we are talking about this centralized structure which is here so started the propaganda that it claimed it had a yeah so then there was like a people who say that god put them in charge they can turn most people into slaves and then like this pyramid and this kind of hierarchy so despite the scalability of centralized governance structure they had a fatal flaw unchecked growth without local self limiting feedback loops eventually led to the collapse the first civilization suffered from the vice that now threatens to overwhelm our own civilization in the very midst of technological advancement purposeless materialism that was like very well said learn the hard way you can technically build great things by a centralized control of power it eventually hollows out civilization over stretches physical resources and collapses in under its own top heavy weight and then things get really bad for a while so this is the end of the cycle when centralized grow where they exploit way more resources they exploit the power hollows out civilization and then there's a period of like that silence and then there is a new cycle is formed so this is the second cycle and the article of greek greek city states and roman so now we have a new technological advancement uh, where alphabets are interchangeable parts of the mind where the, we are seeing language uh you building is pretty on it like it involves a lot of people it gets kicked out by the development of a new communication and coordination tech so, communication and coordination technology like that summarizes like languages is the second uh, one we are discussing here and they dev- invented this phonetic alphabet by using interchangeable letters to form higher order words and ideas that massively expanded the capabilities of written language so they can communicate more things now it frames it uh, it seems trivial now but like at that time like from their perspective like it's a big deal so if always people started writing uh, pe- people pick greeks picked up this technology wrote poems developed games <laughs> and this was very interesting what ancient greek athletes and poets do on the weekend is what everyone's else will do during the week in 200 years and this was like uh, the article by chris dixon what the smartest people do on weekend is what everyone else will do in 10 years it's written in 2013 and basically goes like how people who are developing startup on weekend 
when they go mainstream like all the people will start working on it during the weekdays uh, that's what i got but i haven't gone deeper into this article so all right how we went from poetry to democracy so advance from from poetry and games to self governance people spent a lot of time talking and thinking and decided maybe this whole king thing was a crock of shit so now someone decided to do something about it and greek city states were born where although they had like slaves they would claim citizenship enjoyed an impressively effective form of local democracy given by the limited tools so this is the second point in out of four points localized community formation so did uh, plato argued that okay if we set the limit of 5040 citizens for the local community <laughs> uh, that's perfect like then uh, it's going to be very effective but yeah the scalability was challenging but then this uh, another phenomena emerged of reproducing cities so imagine you can have like local cities but you can scale it up by mimicking the same things in other areas so what group here the middle red organized dispersal to new locations so the splintering allowed city states to stay local and locally governed avoiding the problems of large scale so when when they sent out for a new colony they made no effort it would seem to extend either its territorial or economic domain it sought, sought only to reproduce conditions similar to those of their mother city they had mastered the art of reproducing city. so when they are going to another territory they are bringing the same uh, culture from their origin uh, local cities so that's how like this cities grew to better coordinate this organizationally separate but culturally similar cities started creating federations third step ultimately there were at least 20 different federal structures some cities even airdrop dual citizen to members of other friendly states then the romans showed up and they started accruing centralized power and and the romans had started their own city states were eventually uh, fell into the dictatorship and joy of looting and pillaging so this is the dark phase of after centralized power so this is end of our second cycle so absolute powers corrupts and they proved this once upon a military command legions everyone now restrains much like the collapse of ancient centralized civilization and insatiable lust for physical comforts violence and growth ultimately over extends available resources hollows out the base and implodes similar statement which we read at the end of first cycle so this should shoot up some war- warning lights if you are american collapse of infrastructure and security started long before many people realize and there are some hints you might foresee when you critically analyze your current centralized country government and the amount of violence protests which are happening you you there are like you'll see more and more correlations what's what's going to happen next in this cycle let's come to the medieval era market towns and christian kingdoms so market returns power to the people this was another communication and coordination technology development for this age so after sacking of rome by various barbarians and warlords dark phase of the earlier period but dictatorship dictatorship and limited progress so this is our dark age self sovereignty of newly emerging cities was reborn it came not 
from an act of declarative political political will but from emergence of coordination technologies and reality of markets so new agricultural techniques unlock the ability for peasants to form medieval communes trade and crusades led to increased exchange of knowledge and technologies like paper and printing was developed suddenly have the coordination and uh, we also start need to think like how the the power hierarchy is being re redefined uh, in all of the cycle from like roman empire to and you'll also see how like the this is a, a time where the taxes were uh, came into place so when this market towns became like crucial economic right like and they were like lords and priests who opposed this because it gave like power back to the people so there is like resistance from like the people who have central power but others embrace the trend realize that they have more to gain from extracting rents tolls and taxes from the increased commerce so you see like like the market formation led to this taxes and other things which we foresee in this age unlike asian greece which wrote within self sovereignty the emergence of local decentralized governance local decentralized governance in the middle age came organically through the power of comparative advantage of mutual benefits of trade freedom corporate equality democrat democratic participation autonomy were never fully achieved in any medieval town but there were perhaps a greater measure of these qualities than had ever been exhibited before even in greece so now we see a new league of city states so this again the same pattern we see from history merchant towns and guilds freshly emboldened, emboldened with power and money defensive common free imperial cities and participated in representative governance by the imperial diet some of the local powers of nobility that had avoided succumbing to self sovereign market forces were now large empires of their own so see local to like how this is the scalable scalability and then again there's some dark phase some end of this hierarchical centralized development so with this phenomena climate change phenomenon I mean, the fam federations proved too weak to survive. The remaining great kingdoms benefited in the social disorganization that followed. Power came into the hands of those who controlled armies, trade routes, and great accumulations of uh, capital. So, kingdoms of England, France, etc., and other proto-nation states emerged. The Catholic, the hollowed out. we we heard the hollowed out civilization or uh, before the hollowed out catholic church burning the last of its divine legitimation started selling everything from the priesthood and to permission slips to sin and the whole place reek of late stage centralization all right so you see like now like from empire to like nation state catholic power there's a shift of with shift of new technology there's shift of power and lastly uh this is the fourth cycle in the article of modern era of american villages and nation states so this time there's a development of printing press where we all know gutenberg's printing press was the new development in this era for communication and coordination books and everyone had books and maps they had yearning for adventure so the vc at that time and the startup was like hopping into a sailboat with a compass and seeing where you ended up so now everyone like is exploring new lands and like 
exploiting those resources. So the sailboats went to many places around the world where they rapidly claimed and stole everything in sight. Some of them hailing from England did their claiming and stealing in particularly when and our natural environment that they cleverly called New England. Repeat the cycle again. So from federalist papers to national identities. So as anyone vaguely familiar with American history knows, the cycle continued. Local polities banded together into a federalist structure. So like you can also imagine people came to US with local parties and then formation of US federalist structure. It was generally too weak for longevity. And over time, a more centralized form of government grew stronger and largely sub superseded. And there were like many wars, like uh, there was also like a period of slavery. There were new laws being formed. Then there was like coalition of various states to form the centralized structure. The core problem that the founding fathers of US grappled with was creating sustainable structures for federalism. Failing under the weight of modern centralizations. We have, this was like a very big alarming state. We appear to have once again reached peak centralization and late stage capitalizing. So it's kind of, I felt like it's hinting that this is the end of the cycle of this modern era. So we might see some dark phase and the new revolution coming up soon. America is now exhibiting insecure self-glorification of late ancient Egypt, the crumbling infrastructure and mass appeasement of late classical Rome and the shedding of moral authority of the late medical Catholic. Like this is a very strong statement. Cool. Uh, lastly, the information age, the new technologies for coordination and self-governance. So, yeah, we have like internet blockchains where, which is this era's new communication and coordination protocol for autonomy, self-governance and decentralized cooperation. And when, uh, when I was thinking on the lines like this network states, which are emerging, these are the local communities forming of this era, the step two. And then there would be at some point need of nat national country or like federalized entity cooperating with the network state. That would be like the fourth step in this cycle. But there will various advancement like blockchain solving the Byzantine generals problem, allowing us to prove ownership and also trust strangers online. This was a good advancement. So those are the organizational output of combining this powerful new coordination tools. The historical pres precedents point clearly to what is gonna happen next. Small localized experiments in self-governance are starting to emerge. We are craving a path towards reproducible local towns that can begin to form the mesh network of federated bottom-up governance. One of the biggest takeaway, like from the study of history, cycle and trends, uh, which we could learn. But as we have seen time and again, these federal structures are usually short-lived, weak and fragile, from irrigation of ancient river valleys to Greek city-states to medical mar market towns to New England settlements. The promise of decentralized self-sovereignty has flourished and ultimately failed. It's clear if the cycle can be broken. It's unclear if its cycle can be unbroken, but we have an opportunity that comes only once in many generations to use the latest technology of coordination to have to take another crack at this problem. Only by deeply understanding the ways decentralized organization evolve, federate, and centralize can we attempt to build new versions that are like more resilient to change. Even if history is destined to repeat itself, this cycle should not be considered failures. Each ebb and flow of civilization brings new and improved forms of technology, governance, and prosperity that creates the foundation of for next wave. The cycles rhyme, but they also manifest in more complex and powerful iterations than the predecessor.
So ultimately, at the end of the cycle, civilization faces two choices, devolve into chaos or plow forward with new tools of development to rebuild the decentralized organizations from the bottom up. With eyes wide open to historical precedents behind us, we are a generation that has been handed the tools to build the next iteration of local self-governance and the federated structures of decentralized cities that will form the basis of next era of human prosperity. Let's go to work, Arkida. <laughs> this was a good one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think explains really well like the process since the beginning of like the social structures that we have seen be like uh, through history. Uh, what it what I think like it gives you like a quick background, an idea of how how the time has been changing and. I really like this the example when they when it mentions about like the first communities are still like uh, setting together and that's kind of like and just like you were saying like that's kind of like the first now is the first organizations that start like coming together and and the issue they have is how long they can last right like uh, if the these communities like I like I I know like internet like any digital community is really fragile like no matter what like can be broken like really fast even if it has a lot of power it can grow like in one year it can be like you know like tens of thousands and thousands of people in one community but like the next year the community is gone uh so i think like that's that's one of the things that are important to consider for like uh how does the network communities will work in the in this new era now Yeah, and it clearly says like this is a new form of local governance. So we we have been handed this opportunity. So if we do it well, uh, we can make the change and like grow together for a better scalable centralized network states. Yeah, definitely. Like the opportunity is completely radical. I mean, like. I, I do agree that we, we haven't seen nothing like this. Uh, I do agree that it's uh, one opportunity in a century because probably the thing that we do, will do in the next couple of years is something that's going to prevail for like at least like a hundred years on on how things will go by. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, the, the way that we will experiment and just like, for example, uh, we are looking at the change of like the, the currency, right? Like uh, everyone is going for cryptos, talking about cryptos, but it's still like, we're still like on that phase that it's not that easy in every country to use cryptos, right? It's not like, a, it's not as, as simple as maybe in the States or maybe in, well, actually Europe also like has like some limits in that. But, uh, but I think like it will come at, at, a, at, some, at, at some point, uh, it will be like having like multiple currencies from different countries, just like uh, like uh, all this digital money, like having it, and it's like a currency that you can use. And the thing is, like, how can we make it um, more more international? Like we were talking last week about like, uh, what if we don't have any passports to go from network to network, from community to community, right? So, like cryptos and things like that should be like in a way like a, a first access to allow us this freedom of pass. Yeah, it kind of was like a big, uh, like light bulb moment, like the importance of DAO, which is like, this is like a big things which we can innovate and like, it, it's a very big power and impactful things one could do here. Also, what makes me like to take a step back and think oh. about it is that to be very critical because like oh. in the whole article, he mentioned the way Romans invade this and that. We oh. don't want to hear that 21st century did this to the world and everything is a havoc. So main of the focus can be like, you know, stood, like kids just, just born like a year, they are having phones in their hands and we are we are now cursing the ones who invented the phone maybe so those sort of things should not be there should be thought very like everyone who is enforcing this side should think very critically to every point and how to solve it because 
that's how we can do something right i don't know if it, also there is one more point to co- counter is like nobody can be right or wrong <laughs> it's like i don't know but yeah it's a it's a whole, whole new responsibility if we have for this yeah. generation and now that i think with technology this cycle is getting smaller and smaller like earlier it was 20000 then it was like 5000 period of one cycle then it was 500 there was like internet in 1995 and now there is another form of like blockchain based like communication protocol in 2010 and mostly like developed it's like 15 years or 20 years like that look at that fast scale we are dealing with and like we are just learning mm. and trying to cope up with this thing yeah. yeah this this morning i was doing like a podcast and like the person that uh that i was talking with uh, she was also telling me about like how fast things are changing now half as you have uh, she was recommending to people like adapt fast like try to f- figure out where the tendency is going how can you go with the tendency and move to the tendency and it, i i totally agree with that like you have to adapt like in in terms of like uh like weeks you know like uh, weeks you have to be at least like somewhere like uh have some idea of what you're like uh, doing and what, what are the things that you are like trying to to look there's a lot of information out there but like so my 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 question or like my thoughts about like this article is like how we're going to decentralize like networks completely from from the government you know like okay we have the technology we have the blockchain and everything but uh i'm i'm still like struggling on the on the gap between okay we go for the tech, we, we go for this new era of decentralized from the government but still like how do we decentralize from the taxes you know like uh, from the from those key points that still exist uh, that's like the tricky part you know what like uh, when you were saying it remind so there's like a land between i think croatia and something where like liber land was formed and they have like started from ground scratch no government pe- people bought it this the dow governance so it's similarly where in like people during uh, medieval where they were like taking the ship and discovering new land and like this is our country we'll form our government like we don't know like people are building charter cities or startup cities in honduras and like starting from like bottom up fully determining what what we should do and there's no other political entity controlling those laws so it could be possible we see more and more of those like getting into island and starting from scratch yeah it, it definitely could but you know like this part of the article which said like if you can beat them tax them <laughs> <laughs> I, I think like that part is like really like I was thinking like what what if like these networks like digital they become so strong and so powerful that at some point like the government will be okay like definitely we cannot beat them but let's yep. tax them you know like what if they apply like the same concept in the new era like it's I think like the way we I mean myself I dream with a world that uh, at some point like privacy company and government like like completely merge into a new kind of like system that's that's something that I will w- would love to see because I don't think like one is more important than the other I just think like both of them are like important roles in society and I think like once they start like merging more and more like results will be better for like the whole human and uh for all humans at the end of the day to really collaborate like uh and i see i believe like this type of collaborations we can start like playing the play with them in, in this digital like networks you know barbara uh you wanted to say something yeah i was thinking about the strength maybe the only moment when this new uh way of arrangement of the civilization would take the place of the 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 one that uh happens today would be if we collapse very hard with the mm-hmm. one that exists today and then something different would come up or if the new way of doing things would grow so much and be so strong that would not have the the actual the the one that 
exists today wouldn't be strong enough to fight it. So, okay, you can say you, you want to tax me, but I don't care because I don't need you for anything. Mm -hmm. And if I don't pay you, nothing would happen to me because you don't have strength for that, for this. And I, I don't see any, any of those things happening too soon. Yeah. And, and, go, go. go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, so we, when I think about a uh, country like Brazil, which is very big, huge in area, um, I, I definitely could see something happening in some smaller cities, but uh, we, we have so, so many different uh, uh, technological development in, inside our own country. We have areas with zero technology access. We have areas, very vulnerable areas and very developed areas. So things like these would come in a different speed to all those different places. I really don't know what's gonna happen, definitely. Yeah, I, when you're mentioning like actually, uh, so there is a really good book called Sovereign Individual and uh, it, I was, comparing like so all the state is also having like some uh clashes with the federal like so in colorado it was the first u.s state to legalize marijuana and federally it's not allowed so like there would be more and more local states which will not like which shall have resistance or want some laws and the federal states are clashing with it and uh, to samuel's point i was thinking like in the history also, like uh, there was a time in 1920s where uh, US government, uh, well, like in, in the uh, recession and JP Morgan, like the financial institute had more power than the US government. Right now we see the tech companies like Facebook, Google has more power or more development over the finance, like federal government right uh recently the bitcoin uh, or the cryptocurrency went into three tri trillion dollar investment then the u.s government started to have more policy discussions so even like sometimes these poli uh, federal governments are late to respond to technology so it's the people who are very passionate about technology do things scale it up and then they need to change instead of like asking them to add up like they showcase it and then they need to accept it because now this digital communities has grown so much bigger that I like they will control the, the, some, some laws. Yeah, that's that's actually a good point. Like, uh, it, it does make sense. Like, uh, technology start like growing faster than any institution. Uh, I mean, here we are, like, at least us, which everyone is from a completely different region <laughs> and. We have the access, right? Uh, and yeah, like maybe I, I will. I will say that probably like US is well, it's not probably, but like definitely has more advantage on that than comparing to South America. Like uh, because yeah, I do agree with what with the point that Barbara was saying. What happens with the communities are they don't have access to technology that are uh, as to like really apart from it. So like, will it be like worth it to go for I don't know to a town where just like. 20,000 people and bring them like super fast internet and bring them all and bring all these people on board to, you know, like uh, create educational systems so they can kind of like, uh, like this, this other part of the article where like these people was going on the boats to conquer more land. Mm -hmm. Will the technology area should be, should care about going and, and conquer this like a uh, possible, like uh, Areas where probably genius are there and nobody knows about them, you know. It's quite interesting. Oh, I, I read one recent like interview of ba so Balaji Srinivasan. He's very bullish where like like countries like India, some countries in Asia, like future is like they have a big uh, opportunity for digital content creators, lead influencer, like the social economy. And many times now, like the power dynamics are changing where, because like, let's say there's a song based on the population and influence the creators have. 
they get like millions view very faster and now this developed countries are wanted to collaborate with indian content creators to get more views following so like there are some power dynamic shift where this new countries like maybe china has gained like dominance in manufacturing so when internet let's say comes to uh, this community which has not had the benefit there's a new opportunities which they can provide to 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 the global developed countries we just need to discover it crazy and scary <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just like in la- last two years itself i was like so much shift i had like okay software development is going to impact the world ai is going to impact the world blockchain is going to impact the world and like dude <laughs> how am i supposed to keep up to date yeah, I, th- i think like all of them are going to change the world like uh, I, i in a way we are already like seeing an impact on the world and how they are changing and shifting our mentality and our perspective like i still i still believe that it's like who will prevail you know when all these emerging technologies are starting to happen well maybe like that we will see like 50 emerge uh, possibilities like uh, of of things happening and only three will remain for like the long period you know and that's where that's where you kind of need to to have like a little of i don't know if eyes knowledge because uh, i do agree that it's difficult to follow up with everything like especially nowadays where we see all this amount of information but uh but but at the end of the day like when people is talking like yeah uh, we see a lot of people talking about AI we see a lot of people talking about ML and and now we see like well we we have the DAOs now and I think when you start like looking at them like you figure out that at the end you can combine them you know you, mm-hmm. you can you can kind of like mix them to create a new product or something and it's it's just like a, I think it's the way that I see it uh like I, technology also allows you to do this amazing mix and uh and combination of all this knowledge uh, not just like uh not, not just mathematics or like uh design but uh, you can actually mix like a lot of like psychology marketing that that in one thing you know and back in the days it, it was like every company was working uh on its own you know like we are the constructors but we are the designers and we are these that that I, I believe like we, with this technology, we will see like the vision of everything, you know, like finally progressing into the new world. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, sorry, Richa, go ahead. Yeah, so I was like, I have a root, root thought now, like how architecture will evolve. So I will be like now reading about that next because see like how we have evolved from literally just living under the trees to have some special connections with some you know bedroom living room kitchen like that and once these technology come and we may not need space the way we are seeing right now so it will evolve in a different way and the space language will also change so maybe i Like, that's a very interesting topic to i think explore because physical existence is not going anywhere but how it will evolve to the best that will be a good thing to see for future like next 10 years yeah actually i i was thinking about it sorry if i'm speaking a lot but uh like if if you visualize like a physical and digital on a scale like let's say the value of buildings 200 years ago or 100 years ago we are mostly spending our time there there was no like apps and like in last a uh, couple of decades even if i'm staying in my room uh, i'm more and more increasingly spending my times on digital interfaces uh, like uh, violet whitney mentioned like tinder is influencing our whole social life more than other like how we meet people how we uh, get uh, like people getting married like social media algorithms of 
getting recommendation so the value of di uh, this digital technology is getting more and more uh, attention of our time compared to the physical spaces and in one of the podcasts i listened the and the, the person said the reason metaverse is gonna blow up this time versus earlier because our time in digital space is gonna be more valuable than our time in physical space and it took a time for me to absorb and but it makes a lot of sense we are paying so much for streaming services for apps we use and if we are going to spend most of the time in that metaverse or our value of our time is more than digital has overtaken the physical at some point and physical has to try to keep the repo on <laughs> using the digital <laughs> I read the same the same thing. I don't know if it was an article if, or if you posted, but I read it the same thing. And I was when I was reading, I I was thinking that um, maybe I'm a bit uh, cautious about imagining the metaverse having uh, more importance than more importance than, than the physical world. But when I read that we are going to shift for the metaverse, I keep thinking that we are adding. Like, uh, we are not, of course, we're not leaving the physical existence. Yeah. And we are just adding more important things to our, to our life. So just like the physical world matters, the digital world matters, and it's going to matter more and more as long as we... We keep um, making it more accessible or more interesting, or we keep putting our attention into it. So I'm not sure about this this thing that we read that if we spend 60% of our time in the, the digital universe, if it's gonna matter more than uh, the physical reality, but I don't know, maybe just add, and it's a lot. Yeah. And like, I'm just thinking like many times we go to conference for network and like other, like we do events in physical space. But if uh, in digital space, there's like a space time compression where I can meet a lot many people, I can meet like globally. And those people who can't conf come to conferences are now part of the conference. So the value of the network is increasing the value of uh, maybe saving some time in commute is like, so yeah. is the digital presence in those conferences now valued more or over the physical presences i don't know yeah sure some parts of the real life is very easily shifted to yeah. the online right but some parts don't and that's okay mm -hmm. and yeah. that's not gonna change but for some parts you're absolutely like right so probably maybe these huge spaces for conferences, they might not exist anymore because it's not going to yeah. make sense to have them physical, a physical space so big in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, for example, in my, in my experience, like, uh, so I moved to Mexico City, right, for, to start like working there when I, like, I don't know, like eight years ago. And I remember like having in different offices, like uh, working with people and people that was doing like two to two hours to commute just to arrive to the office and another two hours just to go back to their houses. So that was basically four hours of their life just spent on traffic. And I'm, I'm a bit like coming from a, like a smaller city. I never had that. And I like, it, it didn't make any sense to me. Like, what, what's going on? Like, why people is doing like this? Welcome like, to my life <laughs> yeah. before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. But Paulo's it, just the same. Almost yeah. every big city. Yeah. yeah. No, and in, 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 and in Mexico, like, I realized, like, it was really common for people. But then when I, well, for me, it was definitely, like, like didn't make sense at all. But, okay, you know, you, you go with it because that's what, that's how it is. But now with the when, when we had like this the, the pandemic and everything like and everyone's still like working in their in their homes like 
I keep I, like I ask my like my my friends that used to be like that, and they're like, man, I'm I'm happy with this. Like I'm I'm having four hours like back to my life again. Mm-hmm. So I think that's important of having like, uh, well, just a, a, a small part of the importance of actually allowing people to have like the digital. When you were like basically going to a place just to sit in front of a computer, you know. I mean, other other jobs like I do agree that maybe they need to be physical. You, I don't know if you work in a bakery or something like that, but. If you go for a computer, like uh, from your computer at house to the computer in the office, like doesn't make sense at all, you know? Uh, yeah, it's going to take some time to put everybody in this new connection type of yeah. relationship. Not everybody deals with it in the same way, right? For example, yeah. the e-learning, not everybody mm-hmm. and this, likes it. But uh, at least for me, I enjoy it much better. I think it's much better than the... Uh, physical learning uh, yeah. but it's gonna take some time probably yeah but I, I i do see like maybe the next generation from us like being fully like this like uh maybe. i mean like i think like for me like it's still like physical has a lot of importance but i think physical will be more for the things like doing exercise go i don't know go to a uh, go and pain or like different time of, of environments, but I don't see just like Mayu was saying, like I don't see a conference like happening the way they used to happen. Definitely, conferences are not yeah. gonna happen yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah. But like there are things like music concert where like even the crowd vibe matters yeah. more than the actual music. So, but I'm yeah. thinking it it might be possible human interaction will become a premium, like uh, and. Um, the way I'm saying is like when we call customer service, like we spend half an hour, like an hour just to talk to a human and it becomes so much annoying. Yeah. And uh, like if if more things are getting digitalized, uh, maybe like to talk to a person, taking an appointment, like having an automated, let's say therapy might be cheaper than like a one-on-one therapy uh, with the person. And yeah. one thing about this pandemic is if I were to like if someone were to convince the, the world that everything can be done remotely people would have 10 reasons that oh no this job can't be done but now pandemic like oh this is possible and everyone adapted so there's a big social change uh, we got so things might be a bit different from now yeah, yeah not- so like yeah <laughs> okay coverage Go on. Yeah, I was like, uh, so basically, how um, I, I actually lost the track. I'm so sorry. You guys can carry on. <laughs> sorry. I was thinking that uh, maybe in the near future, uh, taking giving your attention for somebody physically, it's going to be more or less like today with. Uh, calling versus texting if someone calls you i'm not sure if it's it's also there in your culture too but in brazil if you call somebody you're boring don't do it <laughs> don't don't annoy me don't call me text me it's gonna be so much fast right just call me if it's something very important or if you really miss me or if you want to spend some time talking right maybe things are gonna shift a little bit like this too and uh, in spending time maybe that's that was what you were talking about. Mike. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it got annoying when you just call a person versus you do a video call to a person. <laughs> video call is much easier. <laughs> and it feels it feels good. Just calling is like so irritating for me also. But yeah, texting is way more difficult for me as a person. But yeah. So, so video calling and once that meta stuff come out and we'll be like, one-on-one meeting a person just like uh, just not the physically but yeah that will be I think more uh, more impactful to talk we can just actually analyze the whole body language of a person how that person yeah. is walking speaking and sure. that's how the importance of body may come out and you will like at least dress up okay no that will be a uh, something like avatars so basically your body will become like a rack sack maybe <laughs> potato bag <laughs> yeah i think i also also like the amount 
of time that we spend on the digital, I think it will be important to consider because I don't believe that, I mean, I know that nowadays we increase the amount of time that we spend on a digital world, but I don't believe that we're going to be like full time on the digital, like a 24 seven, mm -hmm. you know, I think we still, we still need to understand where's the, where's the line between what what things have to be physical physical and what things have to be digital for like society to keep working you i mean yeah this the experience of traveling like no one like digital i don't think can replace it like that easy even if mm -hmm. digital gives you the chance to go to another whole world or universe sure but maybe the digital is going to be everywhere i i was researching for the crypto barista in the the, vir the mixed reality it's mm -hmm. something that's so close to us it's it's gonna happen so fast i'm definitely believes in it i believe in this in maybe we're not gonna be there or there we're gonna be mm -hmm. in the in same us. thing in everything yeah. together adding more stuff not going in one or the other now you, if we are here inside a computer we are just inside a computer it's hard for me to look at my son and to do something mm -hmm. like i cannot cook and talk to you guys in the computer because it's of course it's gonna be a <laughs> little bit weird but maybe very soon i'll be able to talk with my team at work while i'm i'm there around my son because I can, I will be able to see them uh, in a more organic way uh, through glasses or lens or something that's not as awkward as the Oculus that we have today. Yeah. Uh, in this, I believe. But thinking about how the <laughs> coming back to the subject, how the uh, network state would become a reality and take the place of the organization that we have today that stuff i i don't know maybe maybe if, uh 30 more years i don't know <laughs> i think no, i'm I, a skeptic I, I, I think like uh for me it's it will be like five years like something like that like i think it's going to oh, be no. like super fun <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, like it's just like we were saying like you know nowadays we start like looking at things faster and faster and i remember like it was like five years maybe five years ago the first time that i started like looking at the these virtual reality concepts like in an autodesk event in mexico city and that was like well nice you know like at the at, the, at, the, at that moment i was thinking like why do we need virtual reality for it like did it make sense you know because i like you know, the first time you see something and you kind of like, you're a skeptic about it, you doubt about it. But now it's like, well, definitely it's going to happen. Definitely it's helpful. Wow. When you start like understanding technology, you realize the importance of using it actually in construction, you know, like in, or like in other fields, like not just, uh, not just construction, but I mean, like uh, that, like five years ago compared to now, and now we have it. So the probably in 10 years, we're going to have a lot that requires to use virtual reality in the construction side. Sure. And also one more thought that come in my mind is like, we are just like a stepping generation because we were born when there was a transition starting up. So basically what's going to happen is like, we thought that internet is a one big thing that happened, but that's not true. That was just a playground and people are starting, I mean, we are now building over it. So in a similar fashion, this alpha generation who is not in a transition mode, they are in a real, real playground and we are just building something for them. And once they grow up, they want to do something that we can't even imagine. So it's like a generation thing that's developing that we don't know what, what we are leading towards. If the singularity lets them live. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding <laughs> but we are probably on the edge of that too so maybe yeah. in 20 more years i don't know and i think like we have more responsibilities for the next generation like like this instagram algorithm their performance metric is the maximizing the attention and if people are getting addicted like like we played a big impact in their future by getting them addicted and we didn't voice an opinion or advocated for 
fairness or uh, for their voice so it's we have apart from them like we have a big responsibility yeah cool yes. uh, go ahead no 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 go go no no i, I was just thinking it's like uh decent amount of time so i, I was just going to say like uh, i was reading some dal leadership articles what is meant to be like a community manager what what is the new shift uh mm-hmm. this is going to create in this hierarchy so it's not it's kind of related to network state but not fully like network state requires like uh, like that leaders and influencers so if you guys are interested we can have like the next session talk about how to manage a network state how what are the the ways leadership mechanism works what is this new decentralized operations that yeah, sounds good sure yeah it, i think it's a good idea to keep progress on how these new networks will will start happening until we create a really big one <laughs> yeah i think this would be a good next step because like we understand what is network state and today we understand why network state and what's the possible future trend so now we need to know how to operate a network state yeah okay. that's a, that's a tricky one that will be good <laughs> <laughs> But uh, did we understand why the network state? Did you understand? <laughs> uh, that's a tough. I'm sorry. We can discuss. Tough. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's let's have our own thoughts. Why do you think network state is important? Uh, let's start with each one. I'll, I'll ask Barbara first. I go. Yes. No, I'll go last. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me go less. Okay. Go ahead, Major. Go ahead. <laughs> I was, I was buying some time to think of <laughs> <but Okay. laughs> you put me on this one. Okay. You uh, decided to to make this. <laughs> no, it's it. The more we discuss, it it helps to clarify concepts and develop on it. But thanks for pointing, pointing that. I think. what why network state will become more important according to me is we already have this community led uh, development like we see let's say in creator economy and like ultimately what i see like company people like to work in a company because they like one of the reason is they align with the vision but also they get some financial incentives but at some point there is a very big a uh, difference between like higher authorities get more financial incentives and lower workers don't get that so there are like inherent uh like me- systematic me- mechanism which is not fair and the way mm. i see network state is like we have people with the same vision we have now the first time opportunity where like, not like corporate based company but also like the federal based uh, incentives are not working well for the company sometimes you pay higher taxes and uh, i was reading the chap like chapter in so when and like ultimately like we needed government uh, was like we had agriculture then there was a surplus then there was violence where people were taking away the surplus so in order to protect the violence we need someone like government or higher authority to protect us so, so there is always like surplus and violence leading to some governance but nowadays like government you know for our protection let's say to stay, stay in a city we are paying way more higher taxes but the return we are getting for our protection is not the same amount so even insurance companies could provide us protection we don't need a federal state to provide that protection so things are becoming like a power dynamic shift where if i start a network state i uh, the the whole community decides the governance and now the incentive mechanism has been shifted from top down to bottom up where everyone equally benefits 
and the more community works harder the more network state grows harder and the more overall nation grows so it's not like in current company culture if more people work the company grows profit and the higher authority gets the benefit that's the major state change i i see and also i i think uh it's a new governance mechanism and i i'm more interested to test it out and see how it works and there are always like with new technology you got to test some work some doesn't work so that's one of the reason i thought like there is this development and we should give it a try and what is a architectural network state looks like last year i was so mad with my uh, government with president government and i was uh, starting the thesis and i turned to my husband and i said that's it i'm mad and tired <laughs> uh instead of only proposing a decentralized autonomous organization i think we should establish a decentralized autonomous country that's it i never <laughs> heard of the concept network state and what was moving me was the common uh, beliefs and of course i'm uh, i know that it's very hard to to check if we have common beliefs because you know think when things get too complex uh, people lose their attention and mm -hmm. you just hear the first three rules and the rest of it we just agree because we're tired we we don't want to get deep involvement into that so we it would be almost impossible to find people that share the same concepts to engage in a common a decentralized in a different country in, in nadak the way i called it but Uh, what would be a network state for architecture? And my my question is why a network state and not only a DAO? Why a state and not an organization? If um, if I if I state would wouldn't I state mean more than just uh, just the gathering of people with the same more or less the same profile and the same um, with the same ability isn't that a state a organization that puts together people that can add uh, one to another like I, I have some some type of knowledge and you, you add your type of knowledge like trading apples with tomatoes something like this wouldn't we as architects trade only architecture yeah i i think a network state like currently like uh like what i meant by network state for architect was not like by architects but for architecture development let's say we deeply care about sustainability and we want the housing to be revolutionary we want to use mass timber let's say but the local government doesn't allow for because that's not in the building code or like there is resistance there and we could fight for them for 10 years to get it approved or we like there was one incident where for one net pos net positive energy housing we were proposing like a new plumbing system where you can reuse the black water but because it was not in the code and it was taking like more than six months even we proved like this could be the best system we couldn't do it because so like at one point as you had experience we we lose hope on fighting with the government authorities to get the to do something which we all know is right but because it's too uh, resistive so i think uh, network state we will all benefit from global network where okay there are people who are expert in let's say asia in wood and we want to implement that ideas in south america we are working together and although we are not in the physical proximity we share the same values on the network state proximity yeah. and like the the, the 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 reason like network state with the physical element becomes important is i can form like a another company let's say sustainable focus company and i can design another building but in order to change the governance we need like bottom up approach where 
I am defining the rules for this building without any like there no tax implication, building code implication or something. But we still have like some set base of rules to make it life safety. But there's so much flexibility and people love flexibility and impact. I think one of one of the great things is is what what you are saying, like uh, my you're saying that we will be able to have more equal rights in this network. Mm -hmm. And I do agree with that like a lot. Like I uh, for me it will be amazing to you know earn the same that a person from the States, you know. Correct. Like or like or just have, like we are doing the same job, why you should do more. I think like those points like network will help a lot. I, I do believe that a network will also help to regulate the balance between the wealth that uh, humans we will how distribution is you know especially mm -hmm. like in, in in countries or like uh regions where the, the well the gap between rich and poor is some it's huge compared to others like rich and poor like i remember like for example uh, one of the first times i went to canada like uh i remember we were like on a on a bus and uh we were like we were like on a tour, right? Like uh, just looking different places. So we passed through a neighborhood and the, and the guy from the bus told us like, well, this is a poor neighborhood. And I was like, what? Like, <laughs> this is a poor neighborhood, like in it's Canada, poor. yeah. I'm broken. Yeah, yeah, you should go to Mexico and see the things that we have, you know? So, and, I, and that, that was like a, a, like a moment in my life where I was just thinking like, like Okay, so def definitely there's like difference between the how we perceive and how do we relate relate with the others, you know. So I do agree that the, these net digital networks will bring equally justice and rights and wealth for everyone. But also I do believe like collaboration between different uh, disciplines will be it's possible to achieve it faster than actually going with someone, knowing someone. And just like Major was saying, like, what if, okay, like, I don't find the person that I need here, but like, in if I go to the network digital, like, I just type like, uh, I need a special sustainable level band, I'll find someone in the community. And it takes me like two seconds, while in the, in the physical world, I have to maybe have a tons of database from LinkedIn or from mm -hmm. companies and things like that. And I think the network digital will be faster for those type of things, like finding the right people to collaborate, which and, eventually becomes a state. <laughs> yeah, and the state provides also like the currency of the state. So let's say if I want to send money from US to uh, Brazil, I'm paying taxes to US government, <laughs> and then I'm doing money conversion to that local currency. And then you are paying your taxes on income. If it's a network state, economy we are just sharing tokens to one another and like there's less conversion and like it's a task-based and equal opportunity and what i was thinking like let's say for dowry like it's a state where anyone can be part like if you're let's say you're starting an architecture company you you will uh, hire architects but it, it, let's say in dowry you could have developer part of the network state you can have citizens who are end user of the apartment part of the network state you can have yeah, architects yeah. Everything converges. So I, I created a framework for a network state, and I was thinking I was creating a framework for a, a DAO. Is that is that what you mean? Because that's exactly what I was thinking. Everybody would be <laughs> oh, every everybody would all a part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a network state, it's not a DAO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I I was just th thinking like the dowry idea. All the stakeholders when they are part of the network state, like everyone has incentive, like let's say the people yeah, who it. want to live, wants to have better lifestyle, people who are developer who wants to create best value of, and also get some profit. So how can we have like net positive some game? Yeah, sure. I see. It's yeah, a complex think, challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Still, it's still what it's still the great advantages. Uh, one of the great advantages that I see of this is that uh, we will have we will have the first opportunity of actually losing passport between regions, and I really like that. Like uh, having, well, ha yeah, just go from place to <laughs> place, and and but like having a space where you actually can 
can understand that you are like sharing with a community rather than looking for a place in your community, you know? I think that's, uh, that's a great thing that uh, well, this, this, this will allow us to have uh, in, in the next years. I was, I was just imagining like if we, let's say buy a land, we have like this network state with land. If, and we could even have incentive, let's say you have thousand tokens in this network state and you are part of the citizenship then you don't need visa to enter this country or like this physical land or that itself is your passport of access or something. Yeah, and at, at some point, like I think like that kind of things that become digital will start to have the same impact in the physical world. So it will be like a, like a, how do you say this? Like, I mean, you know, going, from, go, going and coming forward, like a, like back and forth oh. back and forward yeah yeah it's like things that happen in the maybe first in the digital world eventually will happen in the physical world because uh, at some point like all people will have like this kind of like understanding now like this shifted mind of okay we don't need passports now yeah still we have countries we have all this but is there actually a need for it well we have more control of the data for people to move from place to place Maybe dynamics like the, the project that you were showing us, Barbara, like that helps people to have houses like in really fast. Maybe allows the community to actually start like going from place to place as well and finding a physical space between the community to, so they can live like, I don't know, for a year or two and then move to another. Yeah. You know what I realize? Maybe this network state will have digital land uh, in metaverse or their own metaverse could be first and then physical land yeah. second where people are gathering in that 3d space first yeah yeah that will be really nice <laughs> <laughs> i was picturing it but yeah cool uh, uh do you have any concluding statements Who's going to dream about network state and visas? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm telling this because now it's 2.45 a.m. here. <laughs> no conclusions. <Yeah. laughs> Just a lot, of, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things to yeah. think about. Yeah, we can save it for next time. Definitely more conversations to come. Yeah, it, I'm loving like every week, like we are having quite interesting discussions and takeaways. So let's keep this going and do, i really admire barbara like the commitment and the hard work you have like by yeah. this late and still committed yeah. no problem sure. think... yes that's the the hours is natural but i i'm really keen into this subject i'm sure it's gonna be very nice for us in the long term also i could see the passion <laughs> <laughs> We will figure it out. We will figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure. We should do this hackathon definitely. I'll I'll coordinate on the Discord. We should definitely make some prototype. Good. Okay.